I'm Thomas Roth. I'm the Global Data Protection Officer at Böhringer Ingelheim. And hi, I'm Sara Fernandez. I'm the Privacy Strategy Director at Liberty Global. It's interesting that we're going to have a discussion about how GDPR is going with each of us. I, I thought of asking you a first question, which would be, um, what would you say are your three top tips for implementing GDPR? The number one clearly is demystify the law. And part of this is that stop wasting your time on the public debate on the law, how awful it is. It doesn't yeah. make any sense, as we know. Take a clear and sober look yourself. Mm. Um, it's also, the part of this is also to simplify it. I think we can, we have to be bold, simplify it, explain to the people what it really is, mm. stick to the basics. Slice it and dice it is also part of it. Mm. Break it down into something digestible for people and explain the marketing guy what they need to know and the IT folks what they need to know. Yeah. And the last one is translate it. What does it mean, a data breach for example, to someone in IT or in marketing? So this is the number one, demystify. Number two is really about the attitude of people. Make sure that everyone has the right attitude. And by attitude, I mean be pragmatic. No. Perfectionism is not the right thing. Good is good enough. Build on the processes you already have. Be creative. And by be creative, I mean precisely that. Stop complaining about the uncertainty and clarity of the law. It's not going to change. Use it instead come up with something decent, make yeah. up your mind and come, come uh, to Acceptance. the conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. And the last one, very briefly, is accountability. You need to get the business behind it. They need to buy it. They need to put resources and, and, and time behind it. If you do this right, you've already taken uh, the best step ahead. Great. Sounds good. And I like to call them the three Ps to remember and to make it simple. So the first P would be prioritize. The second mm -hmm. is processes, and the third one is people. So prioritize, uh, because this is such a huge thing that no one can make it 100% yeah. perfect. So you need to focus on what is really important for your business and make, uh, put the resources there and uh, look at uh, what kind of business model you have. If you're more customer oriented, you will need to look more into the customer rights. If you're more a processor, you yeah. need to look more into security measures or things like that. Second, process. This is a very big thing, as we said, and, but you need to, to look at the whole end-to-end -end process when you're doing things, because otherwise you'll have gaps and that is where the risk comes. Because as they say, the, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link or something like that, so you need to make sure that the whole process, yeah. embed in the company process, is working. And the third, uh, which is uh, last, but I think it's the most important one, is the people. This is about uh, changing cultures, changing, about, uh, changing the way people relate to personal data, and, and, and you really mm -hmm. need to make everybody in the company aware that uh, they're part of the process, and, and you need to make clear what their role is, so they really help. Um, so it's good to create a, a, some network of uh, uh, privacy ambassadors that are people mm -hmm. that are especially aware and looking into this. And that's, in the end, what really helps driving the change. Mm. company can benefit from the GDPR because it's actually a business opportunity. Instead of seeing it as this scary thing that drives a lot of fines and that we need to because we have to comply, you can look at it and as also a marketing strategy because it's something that you can build trust on uh, and you can create build a trust relationship with your customers because you are, we are going to have a lot of touch points with the customers. There is a whole customer journey around privacy from the moment you start informing them and how transparent you are, from how you allow them to exercise their rights, how accessible you are and how clear you make and how easy, user-friendly you make their exercise of the rights. And even if, uh, to the end, even if you have a data breach and how you mm. apologize to them. So, so you can create a lot of, uh, you have the opportunity to, to have a lot of touch points where you can build that customer trust relationship. So it's actually a, an opportunity. It's a marketing opportunity. It's great. Mm -hmm. I also think that companies can benefit a lot from it. So first of all, it can drive data strategy and data governance because it raises the questions of who owns data, who's responsible for the risk, and who needs to take the decision. Yeah. Some of these questions I'd never asked before. 
and think it's even more in general. You can improve the company's governance as such because by raising these questions. Yeah. And you understand more about the organization and the governance after the answers to those questions. Yeah. So many of the GDPR activities that right in this direction, that people start thinking about how the company is being governed, governed and how uh, decisions are made. Yeah. And the number three is, it's a nice way for legal and compliance an opportunity to step up and facilitate smart risk decisions and to step up as leaders in, in the company and help the business to take the right decisions and to be on track with it. So it's an opportunity you legal and compliance should not lose. You seem so happy to have GDPR in your life. Right? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sara from Liberty Global. I'm Thomas from Böhringer Engelheim. And this was our discussion on the positive aspects of the GDPR. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>